welcome, hello America, aid to welcome to the University of Central Missouri on a surprisingly cold day. It's kind of bright outside, but it's kind of a surprisingly crisp day. It's starting to really feel like winter. Lots of people getting sick, a few people absent because, you know, a week's vacation for Thanksgiving now is not, no longer long enough. I mean, it was, a, when I arrived here five years ago, five, six years ago, Thanksgiving vacation was two or three days. Might have only been two days, maybe three. But it certainly wasn't a whole week. So it's only been in the last four or five, it's only been in the last four years that it's been extended to a week, and now a week's not enough. And they're leaving early. What's with that? I mean, how long does it take to get, I mean, you can get to anywhere in the world between now and next Thursday, anywhere. You know, you can walk a long ways <laughs> between now and next Thursday. So anyway, I'm sure glad you all are here. Aren't you glad you, you all are here? Holden, Holden glad he's here. Well, two quotes worth remembering. Remember that, are you on, what page should we be on? I have no idea. 245. You two were on the same, no, you weren't on the same page. You can't get started until you get to the right page. There we are. There we are. Remember that, ooh, what page? 240, there we are, there we are. Now are you ready? Awesome. Can we get started now? Remember that time is money. Did you write that down? What did I just say, sir? Time is money. She's very good. The snack was helpful. Brandon, how are you? Getting a, getting a functioning writing utensil out of the bag? Trying. Trying. Where was your writing utensil? Ooh. <coughs> JJ, you got that written down? Time is money. Who said that? Ben Franklin. Ben Franklin. It's written right there. Okay. So Dr. Fessler today is going to say something. Is that who it says it's going to say? Dr. Nick Fessler is going to say something today. Not quite this, not quite as good as, nor, or nor as famous as time is money. But, you know, maybe someday. Okay, so Dr. Fessler today, and on today's date, what is today's date? Because make sure and note today's date. 11-18-2010. Not that that's particularly important, but it gives you something to do. Dr. Fessler is going to say, money is not free. Rubina, thank you for the courtesy laugh. <laughs> money is not free. And so every capital budgeting problem has two corresponding facets. What is a facet? Anybody know what the original, what is a facet? Like hardware. Mm -hmm. hardware? I'm sorry? It's a facet. What is a facet? Ooh. Nick, do you know? This is a good lawyer-like term. A part of something. Specifically, though, it is, it is a part. It's the side of a diamond or a cut stone. I know. Girls should know this. <laughs> and not a one did. <laughs> but I, I mean, double check me, but I do believe a facet is the side of a diamond. So it is a part of something. Clearly, one side of a diamond is part of the whole diamondic experience. But the facet, I do believe, is, this, is one side of the diamond, okay? So every capital budgeting problem has two corresponding facets. And now all girls in the room are thinking about diamonds. Um, amount of time, amount of time. And then a rate of return. A rate of return. Amount of time, rate of return. Okay. So, is anybody here, let me see a show of hands. Who here has a savings account? Savings account. Okay. So, savings account. Next month, are you going to have more money? Assuming you don't take, it, take any money away. If you make no additions or subtractions, next month, are you going to have more money or less money than you do today? More money. More money. Okay. So, that 
and that's the, that's the concept, that's what I want you to be thinking about as we go through those problems today. So if you look at the next page, a dollar earning a return, is it worth more tomorrow or less tomorrow than it is today? JJ? More. Did you already circle that? No? Okay. Circle more, not less. So a dollar earning a return is worth more tomorrow than it is worth today. Uh, and, then the, and then think about the opposite. A dollar earning a return, is it worth less or more today than it'll be worth tomorrow? Less. That's supposed to be fairly obvious. Very good. Thus, and so I want you to get the, kind of this notion, there's two notes, there's, these, now we're getting into more accounting-ish words, present value, future value. Present value is worth less, is less than future value. You already knew this? Yeah. Are you with? A dollar in a savings account. A dollar earning a, sa a dollar in a savings account. So, so a dollar earning a return or a dollar earning interest, if you will. That's one way to think about it. <coughs> I'm sorry. On that note, um, where is money to be valued over time? So that's well, now you're making it too complicated. We're not. We're not bringing. We're not. We're not uh, going to incorporate uh, inflation into this. Okay. We're just incorporating the math associated with present value and future cal value calculations, and that'll be complicated enough for now. No, because I'm not going to disagree with you, but, but hopefully the rate of return that you earn is higher than the loss, and, but anyway, we're not going there. Okay, let's look at the next page, because there's a big look at the higher the interest rate, the lower the present value. That seems a little counterintuitive, but you know, think about it. If you need $100 in the bank December 31st, a year from now, if you need $100 in the bank December 31st, a year from now, the higher your interest rate you are earning in your, on your interest-bearing checking or interest-bearing savings account, the higher the interest rate, the less you have to put in today to get to have a hundred dollars a little over a year from now. Does that make sense, Tyson? Okay. And so I want you to on this page with the big box. I want you to. Uh, I've got note to students. Think cash, and I would like you to write it on that page. Think cash. <coughs> and here is a simple way to calculate cash, cash in specifically. Uh, net income, excuse me, add back depreciation, it's a good way to calculate cash, okay? <clears throat> now, by way of review, if we look on the next page, what is a relevant cost? And this should be a review. Megan, do you remember what a relevant cost is? Or can you find it fairly quickly in the handy handouts? Relevant cost, a, a relevant cost is what? I'm sorry? Absolutely. The shorter, the better. It could be on your cheat sheet if you prepared a cheat sheet with these, all these definitions on. That's one of the benefits of cheat sheets sometimes. Oh, shucks. Katie, can you help her? Do you know what a relevant cost is? You're looking? Awesome. You know it? I know it's a cost. It's not a fixed cost. Correct. That's a true statement. It's not a fixed cost. What do you have? A cost that is avoidable is a, is a relevant cost. What page in the, oh, you look at your cheat sheet. <laughs> page 61, page 61 is where we're getting these, this information from. Uh, page 61, uh, ECTA, what is a sunk cost? Page 61. Page 61, I'm sorry? Could be that. It's Expo marker. 
What did I do with the one this one? Do you have it? Is that the smell? A cost already incurred. That's exactly correct. Chance is a cost already incurred relevant. Which answer do you like better? Because you've given both now, yes and no. It's not relevant. It's not relevant. So a cost already incurred is what a sunk cost is. As Ecta very correctly pointed us out to us, and Chance, when he finally settled on his answer, said no, it is not relevant, which is correct. Okay? What is an opportunity cost, Holden? So yeah, it is, that's the kind of the long version, a cost, you know, it's kind of what you give up to get what you choose, right? Okay, yeah. but what, how did I say it though? I gave you a shorter answer. It is a correct answer conceptually, what's the shorter answer to say though? Giving up something to do something else. Or you can even say it faster than that though. <laughs> that is correct, conceptually. Nick, do you have it? I'm missing one word. A potential benefit foregone. See, that's fewer words. What you give, what you, what you give up to what you get, or a potential benefit foregone. They conceptually mean the exact same thing, but it's just fewer words. It's just fewer words. But if that's what you want to remember for the test, it'll work perfectly. Okay. Is an opportunity cost relevant, Heidi? Yes. Yes. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Or awesome possum, as I've said this semester. Capital budgeting, look what, look what I give you on the next page. Isn't that cool? That is Benjamin Franklin's letter, wherein he wrote, time is money, okay? Um, and then there's some more just kind of saying thematically, there's you know, more quotes from Benjamin Franklin on the next page after that. Now, you don't want to read it now. You can read it later, outside of class. There you go. Uh, now, let's look at those tables. These two tables that you see on what page? What page are those tables on? 251. 251. Those tables will be reproduced on your exam, on your final exam. Okay, so the, you will have exactly those tables on your exam. And because I care so much, I want you to know that I actually typed every one of those numbers. No joke, real life, I did. Every one of those numbers. Because I couldn't figure out how to copy and paste it and get it into the right format correctly. Because um, I'm a technological doofus that way, I suppose. So I'm on iTunes, iTunes U, YouTube. I have my own website. And I can't figure out how to copy and paste numbers appropriately. Go figure. But these two, both of these two tables will be on your final exam. Um, and I want you to know the difference between them. The first one helps us know, and actually that is the one we'll just talk about for, for now, and we'll come back and see this again later. Present, it's got a strange name, present value of one dollar due in n periods, okay? So this is the example, so suppose you need one dollar in your bank a year from today. How much money do you need to put in the bank today? That, that question is what this table will help us answer. Because we look at first, okay, how much interest will the bank be paying me? And do you see interest on there? Yes, you do, don't you? Across the top? Yep, across the top. And then down the left side, it has years. So if at 7% interest, which you're never going to get out of a, a savings account right at the moment, but at 7% interest a year from today, how much money do you need to put in in order to get out a dollar? How much? 93.46 cents. So put in 94 cents just to be sure, and you'll wind up with a dollar exactly a year from now. Do you see that? Do you see that?
Well, 93 cents is .93. Okay, you said six cents. Yes, 90, 93 cents is, so it's 93 point four some cents, which is equivalent to 90, .93 dollars. Right? Am I saying that right? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes I, I talk fast, I've been told. And so sometimes I talk faster than I'm thinking, or vice versa, something to that effect. Questions, comments, concerns, random thoughts? Anyone? Tony? No? Okay. Let's do some problems, because we've got some problems to get through today. Thankfully, they're fairly easy. These are fairly straightforward. Here's some terms and definitions. Uh, you can check those out on your own time. They might prove helpful. Let's go to stuffing company, A. Eh? And this is, clearly it was the fall semester when I named these problems. To me, turkey is an excuse for stuffing, also known as dressing. So you don't even need turkey to have dressing, you need to make dressing. Thank heavens. Yes. I've done that before. Made dressing without even touching a turkey. Exactly. And gravy, who needs the turkey? And so, and then I already had a writing next. So stuffing company, unfortunately I'm hungry and so this is not a good thing to be talking about right at the moment. Stuffing company has an opportunity to invest $60,000 in new equipment. Management expects the company to receive cash inflows of approximately $25,000 per year from the investment. Um, the equipment is expected to have a useful life of three years. The company has a hurdle rate or, I mean, in this case, basically what a hurdle rate means is this is how much money they want to make sure they earn. If you want to think about it as interest, they want to earn this much interest on the investment. Although the more accurate word is return, you know, how much money are we getting back on the money we spent in. The company has a hurdle rate of 10%. Let's you calculate, let's use the net present value method to determine if stuffing, stuffing companies should invest in the new equipment, okay? So, timeline, okay? <laughs> Here's the present, year one, year two, year three. And in the present, how much money are they anticipating investing in this project, Kaylee? Ooh, no, not 25,000. They're investing how much? 60,000, exactly right, 60,000. So. <clears throat> They're going to put $60,000 in. Is that an inflow or an outflow, do you think, Sarah? Money in, money out. Mm -hmm. Ooh. But they're, they're, they're investing it. They're actually going to uh, okay. spend $60,000 and they're going to get $25,000 in year one, $25,000 in year two, and $25,000 in year three coming in. And basically, I mean, clearly we can see it adds up to more than $60,000, right? So they're going to get their money back. But what we don't know is, is does it add up to $60,000 plus 10% interest or a 10% return, which is what they said they want, right? A 10% return. <coughs> so what I want you to do, I want some help because we need the factors. What percent are they, what percent are we using here? Tyler? 10. So, can you check out that table? You all might want to kind of permanently put a thumb there or flip over you know, a corner of a page or that table. We're going to be using those tables a bit today. What factor then do we need? 10% one year, Tyler. Give me the whole number. 9091, okay. Evan, help me with that math. Whitney, what about two years, 10%? What number? Well, that's okay. Two years, 10%? Yes. Uh, 10 would be 8264. 8264? Well, what about the dollar dude, right? Huh? What about the dollar dude or the dollar dude? The top one, just the top one, the dollar dude. 8264. And then who was going to help me with the math there? JJ, you're on that math. And then Chris, three years, 10%. Uh, 0. 0.75 one year. 0.7543? One three. And 
Kylie, if you could do that math. Math number one, Evan. Say again, 22,000 and 50 cents. Beautiful. Who is next? JJ. Uh, I don't have the list. You don't have your calculator. Where is your calculator? We've had this conversation before, and I bet it's on film. <laughs> Where's your calculator? Heavens, it's only an accounting class. We never need a calculator in accounting class. <sighs> Kristen, do you have it? Oh, she's going to go get her calculator now. Brett, do you have it? Yes. Please. $20, that? Twenty thousand. Say it slower. Twenty-one thousand. Ah. Uh, and forty-two cents. Twenty thousand. Forty-two and fifty cents. Ooh, a lot of disagreement. What do you think it should be? What? 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 Any pennies? Okay. And who's supposed to do the last one? Please. $18,782.50. And how much? 70 cents? 50 cents. And now what we need to do is add these all together and put them there. There's a lot of people missing here. Nicole, do you have it? As long as that's a positive number, we're happy. Because we use that 10% factor to calculate those other numbers that added up to this. And so uh, we are happy, very happy, because we have a project that earns a 10% return over three years and even more. Okay? So we are happy. Yes, sir? So how did I make this money? What do you mean, how did? Yeah, sales or, yeah, it's actually profit. It's cash flows, technically. You know, however, you know, you, 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 you or, 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 yes. Well, but they're, they're expecting to, right? Why, why would you, if you got $60,000, who's involved in those little, one of those little trinket selling companies? I know Chance is. Who else? Or not Chance, but uh, the old boy at the end. Yeah, and so what are you all selling? You're selling, are you water bottle company too? What, what are you selling? Sweatbands. Sweatbands. So we've got sweatbands, and, what, and are you on the sweatband? Sweatpants. Sweatpants. So we've got sweatbands. Are you listening? If you spend sixty thousand dollars with this company, they're going to be making sweatbands, making and selling sweatbands. Okay. If you invest in this company, sixty thousand dollars, you are making sweatpants. And if you are in this company, you're making and selling water bottles. Okay? If you invest $60,000 in this company, how are you getting your money back? Selling what? And for them? Which product? I named it. No, you weren't paying attention. Sweat bands for this, for this particular. So you said sweat bands or sweat pants? Oh, bands. Then you were correct. Then you were correct. Oh, what? <laughs> And so you invest, so you sell lots, you hope they sell, if you want to invest in that company, you hope they sell lots and lots and lots of sweatbands, right? And then you get $25,000 a year back. Can they sell enough sweatbands to get $25,000 a year back? OK. 
Can they sell enough sweat bands to get $25,000 a year back? They could. They could. Which company do you think would be most likely? Out of those three? Yeah, those three. But see, that's where. I, but that's how you would choose. But that's what. That's the decision you'd make. Have to make. Yes, sir, Tyson. Yeah. In this case, the the equipment would be lower operating expenses, potentially. Right. If you buy a high higher tech piece of equipment, that's going to yield lower. What don't you understand? They're spending. Uh, they're well. They are. They are spending money. But the, the concept is they are spending money because they're expecting a benefit. So, you know, and you don't have to kind of riddle through much more than that, really, in the sense of, you know, they're expecting a benefit either in terms of additional sales and profits coming in, or in this case, can we, can, you know, if we can buy a machine that would save money. That would save them 2125 No, it would save them $25,000 a year. And so what the, all this, all we care about this number is that because it's positive, because it's bigger than zero, that means it, we needed to earn 62,100, this project has to earn $62,170 in order to earn us a 10% re return over three years. We've got even $2,000 more than that, so we're actually earning a return greater than 10%, and we're happy. And that's our decision. So our decision is yes. Do this, we are happy. We're earning at least 10%, a 10% return over the course of three years by spending this money. So you chose the 75,000. Right? Yes. But a sale three years from now isn't worth as much money as a sale this year, which is the whole time value of money thing. What's, you know, You know, if you need a little help, unfortunately, we've got to make sure I get through all the problems. If you want to conceptually understand it a little better, and I'm not doing a really great job, which apparently I'm not, you might read through your textbook on this. You know, kind of the first couple of pages or first four or five pages of your textbook on the chapter and, and, and uh, see if that is helpful. Okay, yes, sir. Yes, yes, it is. Accounting, and this number has a name. Th uh, this number is called the present value. This number right here, sixty-two thousand dollars or sixty-two thousand one hundred seventy thousand, is the present value of that investment of our, uh, of our. And this number has a name as well. It's called the net present value because it is the present value. You know, it's the difference between our investment and the present value equals the net present value, okay? Okay, so far so good? Now, yes, ma'am. Okay, would the $62,000 be the present value of the cash flow, and then the $63,000 from your $72,000 present value of the cash flow? Yes, that would be, that would be, a, that would be a good way to just okay. think of it. Uh, now, we do have a special case situation here. Tyson, how are you doing? We've got a special case situation here because we have equal payments, equal receipts every, every year, right? So who here has a car payment? Thankfully, my car's paid for, but I'm going to have one pretty soon. A car payment is an annuity, is an annuity because you're paying the same amount every month. You can also have an annuity. You can choose, if you win the lottery, if you buy a lottery ticket, win the lottery, you can choose either to get a lump sum or an annuity for 20 years. You can choose to either get it all today, which is generally the better choice, particularly for people who have accounting training, um, or you can choose to get the same amount every year for the next 20 years, net this interest type stuff. And so, uh, what, anyway, this is an annuity, which means there's a faster way to do the problem. And do you see it? It's an annuity because $25,000 a year. Ekta? Well, 
we're not even going to worry about taxes. Don't worry about taxes. Don't worry about taxes. We're not going to worry about taxes. You don't make it too complicated. You can, you're going to get to see this three or four times in your academic careers. This is not going to be the last time you teach it, you see it. Um, and so don't worry about taxes, okay? Promise? Okay. And so, and Whitney mentioned, there's another table, isn't there? If you look at the bottom table, what does it say in it? And really, this is the only word I look for. It says something about an annuity. I really don't know what all that gar gar yeah, gobbledygook says, but one talks about an annuity and the other one does not. And so the annuity table. So instead of 25,000 and doing it three times, we can go, oh, let's do it over here. $25,000, a three-year annuity at 10%. Tell me the number, Nicole. 10% three-year annuity. What's the number off the table? Okay, math, please. Rebecca? Re math, please. There are a lot of people missing today. Will you? Well, you get points for coming, right? Yes. Okay. Now, it's awfully darn close, isn't it? A little bit of rounding somewhere in there. Is this going to be a smiley face as well? Absolutely, because it it's bigger than the 60,000. So, so what have I just done? I have showed you two different ways to calculate the same problem. Okay. One using the first table, which is individual year by year, and the second, the second way is f if you happen to have an annuity situation, then you can do it the short way. Yes, sir? It would be, but, but now you've learned how to do it both ways, which is really kind of important. And it's easier to understand the second way once you understand the first way. No. The test is just going to give you the information and ask you to calculate the net present value. And what is the net present value on the board? It's not, I don't have it written down, I don't have the label, but the number is there. Alex, what is the number? What is the net present value? If I give you this information and ask you to calculate the net present value, which number am I asking for? The 2,170. The 2,170. If I give you all this information and ask you, Tyson, to calculate the present value of the cash inflows. 62,130. Yep. 62, yeah, we, you know, either one of those. I mean, the, you know, the answers aren't going to be close enough together that you can't figure out which one's the right one. Okay, does that make sense? So far, so good. Yes, ma'am. No. Yes, I'll have to. Yes, you have to know the difference because we haven't learned how to do IR yet. Yes. Okay. So if you choose to use the annuity, right? Yes. And your answer is 50 cents off of the other one, will you have both of the answers on there? No, absolutely not. I'm not that mean. She, th she clearly thinks so, but I am not that mean. No, I'm just saying it won't have both of the answers for the, like, A won't be two numbers, like this is because... No, it will not. It'll just be one number so that will be somewhere that. between these two. Yes, in that, in that case. JJ, don't fall asleep on me. Should you move your bag away from pillow range? <laughs> Stuffing company B, we need to do the internal rate of return, calculate the internal rate of return. <clears throat> so how do we know when we've calculated the internal rate of return? And I'm about to tell you. Internal rate of return we, is when the net present value equals zero when net present value equals zero. 
then we know the internal rate of return. Did you write that down? Okay. So the internal rate of return is a percent. It's a percent off that table. <sighs> When we calculated a net present value of 2170, what did we use as a, a rate of return? How much? 10%. 10%. Is our net present value zero? No. So what do we need to do to bring this to zero? Does it need to be bigger or smaller? Smaller. So do we need to try out Tri internal rate of return is calculated by trial and error. That might be the other thing you write down. Internal rate of return is calculated by trial and error. Even your calculator does it by trial and error. It tries one and then another, and it's got a, a method for arriving at the internal rate of return. Okay. So trial and error. Now, at, we know at 10%, this is what it is. So at 10%, that is what it is. Let's try another percent. What percent should we try? <coughs> remember the big little, the, remember the thing in a box that I had in your notes on the second or third page of the notes? That's what you should be thinking about right now. What's it say? What does it say, the phrase in the box there? The higher the interest rate, the lower the present value. So, so do we want to try a interest rate higher than 10% or lower than 10%? Higher. higher, because we want the present value to get smaller, so this number becomes zero. Does it make sense? Does this make sense? So let's just kind of work our way through. It's not going to take us very long. So we can try. Whitney actually suggested 12%. And we can try 13% as well. Let's see what happens, OK? So we're going to take 25,000. Each of these involves 25,000, $25,000, dollars. And then we just need those factors, 11% for an annuity for three years. Rubina, 11% annuity, three years. What's our factor? Tony, you can do 12%. Give me the factor. And uh, Davis, 13% factor. Robina? Four, four, what? Three, seven. Three, seven. Ten. Jennifer McCarty, if you'd work on the math for that. Uh, Tony, 12%. How much? 2.4018. Uh, Davis. 2.3613. Okay. And then Jennifer's going to give 11%. Brandon, can you do 12%? And uh, good heavens, there's a lot of people. Scott, 13%. Jennifer? How much? 25,000 times 2.4437? Maybe not. It's going to be something close to 60,000. Brandon, do you have 12%? Uh, Jennifer. And how many cents? Okay. I wondered if that is what, is ha what happened. Okay. Uh, Brandon? Uh, $60,000. And Scott? <coughs> How many pennies? Okay. Which one of those is closest to $60,000? 12%. Okay. So what is, and what is the internal rate of return for this project? 12%. So that is the answer. 12% is the internal rate of return for this project. Because, excuse me, it yields 
a net present value of almost zero. There is actually a way to mathematically get it precisely what it is, but we'll say you can, I'll let you learn that some other semester in some other class. Holden is very happy about that. Sweet, I think, is what I just read his lips as saying. <laughs> Questions, comments, concerns, random thoughts? Please. Yes. Because you're, you, it's, it's, you're still using the same process. You're calculating present value, calculating net present value, and trying to get a net present value of zero. And so internal rate of return is just the rate, rate of return, the interest rate, if you will, that will yield. Yes. Questions, comments, concerns, random thoughts? Gets a little easier after this. So far, so good? Scott, you going to make it? He is yawning, getting ready for, I mean, Turkey, don't have turkey, you know, you're gonna, it's really going to put you to sleep. Bird, fowl is supposed to have something in it that really puts you to sleep. So what was the internal rate of return for this problem, Ashton? 12% uh, it was. Very good. Let us go to stuffing company C as in Charlie. I must, I just had my brain, I just was thinking Thanksgiving when I wrote these, when I created these problem names. Now, I need to give you a formula, and actually, you all can take just a short break. Don't go to sleep on me as I erase the board. What's the problem asking us about? What are we going to be calculating here, Ashton? It should, it's probably in bold letters, bold. The payback period, okay? So the payback period is conceptually how long it takes to get your money back. I mean, in some sense, it's kind of a break-even-ish sort of a concept. You know, so the payback period is how long does it take for us to get our money back? Did you write anything down, Scott? Uh, no, sir. Okay, just checking. Nick? What would you write down? Uh, what was it I said? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, how long does it take to get your money back? Very good, very good. Now write that down. How long does it take to get your money back? Nick, you can write that down too. Because Robina's smile revealed that uh, you did not actually write anything down. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Poor Nick. Uh, payback period. And I'm also going to give you a formula. Payback period equals original investment divided by periodic cash flow. Okay? Origi payback period equals the original investment divided by periodic cash flow. Okay? Uh, although we won't need this formula to do all of these, but let's kind of do year one. Year one invest, well actually not year one, excuse me. We need to do investment A, Katie. Investment A, notice that Stuff and Company is three different projects that will all require an additional investment of $100,000. So Katie, how long will it take us to how many years will it take to get that money back for investment A? Two. two years. Two years. Exactly right. Two years. You, so we don't need the formula there. We don't need the formula. We can just kind of add through the years until we get our money back. See how easy that was, Sarah? Wasn't that easy? I thought so. Ekta, did you think that was easy? No? Do you see how she got 100000 how, how, how she got the answer? If you look, how much money did they invest? Do you see that, Ekta? $100,000. And so if you look at investment A, year one, how much did they get back? $20,000. Year two, how much did they get back? How much do those two numbers add up to? We got our money back. So that it took us two years. We got our money back. It just took us two years. Chris, you good? 
Brittany, how about year two? Or not year two. I don't know why I'm stuck on that. Investment B. Investment B, how long will it take us to get our money back? Two years, the same two-year period. Which of those two investments would you prefer, Chance? I mean, if you were choose, I mean, if which one of those two looks better? I mean, the payback period is the same, right? Two years for both. Which one's better though? Would be B. B. Why? Because you get your your most of your money back on your one. Yeah, you get more money back sooner on investment B rather than C. Okay, very good. So now Holden, for investment C, we need to use the formula on the board. Do you have a calculator? Thank you. So investment of 100,000 divided by periodic cash flows of 39,000. And then operate calculator. Two point five six, and you can write that down. <laughs> did you do it right? Uh, yeah. Kyrie, did you do it right? Yeah. Okay, two point five six years. And that's the answer. And it's just that easy. Payback period. Nick, what is a payback period conceptually? Because I know you've written it down now. The time it takes to get your money back. Scott, is that what you wrote down? What did you write down? How long does it take to get your money back? Very good. Very good. So how long does it take? And there's also definitions in those materials we've kind of skipped over. Okay, so that is the payback period. So we've learned a lot so far. What's what number? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. No more chart. We're done with the chart. Oof. But we've now learned four things. Four things. We've now learned four things. Right? Four things. We've learned how to calculate present value. And we'll get to you in just a moment, Kylie. We've learned how to calculate present value, net present value, the internal rate of return, and the payback period. Four things. Kyle? Um, on the payback period, are we ever going to do an investment where um, it might be like the first year is 90000 the second year is 5000 and the last year is like 30000 So there's different return on investments, but there's not a annuity. How would you do that? How would you approach that problem? If, if it were 95 and 30? How would you uh, do it? Just make the assumption that you're getting the same of the 30, because the thing is you get the same amount every month. Or just fractionalize. It's not, it shouldn't be too hard to just fractionalize that and come out with the right answer. Are we going to do it with it? I have no idea. Quite possibly. But maybe not. So just divide by 12. Like, like, like suppose you have 90,000 in the first year, 5,000 in the second year, and 30,000 in the third year. So it's actually two point some years, right? Because it's two, it's two years, in two years we don't get our 100,000 back, we've got to go into the third year. But the, it doesn't come out even, so divide the third year by 12 months. Does that work? It'd be two months? Okay. So two years, two months. So, so it shouldn't be too hard. I got it. What, what are you really confused about? Okay. And then Three years by the twelve. The, the third year 30, by twelve. The thirty thousand by twelve months okay. to arrive at an amount per month, and so it takes. Yeah, and so it takes two months to get to. <laughs> it takes two months of the third year to get to a hundred thousand dollar investment. So then it'd be either two years, two months, or two point, it's like two years, two months. or whatever the however it's formatted in the solution. Right, because this is these are multiple choice questions, so that's going to help you. Yes, ma'am. It's actually the worst of the three. 
Because that is the longest payback period. Because how long, Holden, how long was your payback period for investment C? 2.5 years. It's actually the worst one of the three. So, but with regard to payback period, there, there are, not that I'm going to say, with reg specifically with regard to payback period, uh, you make the most, or you get your money back sooner. And not, because I don't want to discount what you said, because that's certainly a factor that would influence decisions. But specifically with regard to the payback period, uh, the best choice would be B. In real life, these, these are, I mean, they look at a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, but right now, we're just learning the mechanics of those whole bunch of stuff, okay? Um, so again, you know, you're, what, 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 what I hope you're learning here is some of the calculations with regard to, and we're only calculating present value. You can turn around in other classes, you're going to learn how to calculate future value. But so there's a lot more to be learned here. I'm just doing kind of a little bit to get you started and to get you ready for the final exam. Does that sound like a plan? Start out just kind of simple? Jennifer, is that okay? Okay. Stuffing company C, let's move on to stuffing company D, as in dog. <coughs> or Doug, which is my youngest brother's name, or my only brother's name, actually. My youngest, my only, my only sibling's name is Doug. Yes? Is that your sibling's name, too? That's your dad's name. And it's not that common of a name. So, Stuff and Company D. Stuff and Company has yet another investment it is considering. Do companies do this? All the time. They got to decide, do we spend our money doing that, or do we spend our money doing this? Do we make... Sweat bands, sweat pants, or water bottles. We don't have enough money to do all of them. Which one do we do? Do companies make those decisions? All the time. And these groups, the groups from what, what's the name of that class? I always, IBE. IBE. The groups in IBE, they, they had to make a choice because they're, they're playing with real money. They had to make a, a real choice about what do we invest our money in? What kind of a product do we invest our money in that we're going to try and sell? Okay. Now, the investment, how much do you all have to invest? Is there a minimum? How much, because do you all borrow the same amounts? No. No. But the amount you borrow is the amount of their investments. Because they all, you all have a bank loan, right? They all have a bank loan. That's how much they're investing in their company. And what they want to make sure they, because are you paying interest on your loans? Very little. Very little, but nonetheless interest. Mm -hmm. So they have to make sure they're selling enough product to repay the principal, to recover the initial investment, plus earn a return, which is the rate of interest on their loan. Okay? And so that's very analogous to what we're doing here. Um, here, this, they're still in, in this problem, they're still initially investing $100,000. The life of the investment is five years. The investment is expected to produce net income as follows. Special note. You ready? Okay, special note. This is the only problem. This is the o uh, we are calculating accounting rate of return. If you look down at the bottom, what is the accounting rate of return for investment C, and this is the only one of the calculations we're doing today which uses net income in the calculation. This is the only one that uses net income in the calculation. All of the others have used what? Cash, cash flows. Okay, all of the others have used cash flows this is the only one that uses net income. Okay, so that is a very important thing to note. So these numbers that we got here, year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, those are all net incomes. And while I am writing, you can make note, another name for the accounting rate of return is also the simple rate of return. And you might make note of that. It's also known as the simple 
rate of return. So like the accounting rate of return It's also known as the simple rate of return. And here's how we calculate the accounting rate of return. Okay, the formula is now on the board. Accounting rate of return is calculated as the average net income divided by the original investment. The average net income divided by the original investment. So you should be able to get to work on that calculation right now. Heidi, do you have it done? She's almost. She's working on it. Holden, do you have it done? How much? 0.16. which is also known as 16%. Kaylee, how did she get that $16,000 number? 80,000 divided by 5. Is the 80,000 already added up for you? Okay. Recognize I might not add up all the numbers for you on the test. Can you deal, can you? Is that, would, would that be okay? Could you figure that out, Tony? Okay. We're getting there. How are you doing? JJ? Can I erase all this? Next problem, stuffing company. What do you think we're going to? Stuffing company E, as in Edward, which is my dad's middle name. Tyson, question? Nope. Just stretching. Okay. We are on the last problem of the day. Whew. That brought a kind of half smile or two to people's faces. Are you cold? Yep. Yes. I have the benefit of exercising while I'm up here. So. I'm sorry? Are you you're cold too? Me? Yeah. I am in my freezer, but if I was. Oh. Okay. So are we hanging in there? So far so good. You feel like you've learned a little bit? Hopefully. At least a little. That was a strange gesture. Crossing the fingers here and trying to say a little at the same time. You all try that. That's awkward. <laughs> He's like, I am not gonna try that, he says. Oh, and I've already explained this to you. If you fold your arms, fold your arms, everybody, including you, JJ. I know how. And now switch. It really feels wrong, doesn't it? Usually, usually we all have one favorite way to do it, and the other way just feels absolutely wrong. Oh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't think about that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Which are really over the other way. Yeah, it's, that's, 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 that, I've, I've always done it this way, I can tell. <laughs> Davis, how you doing? You just tried it? Which thumb do you usually put on the top? Ooh, that's wrong. That is <laughs> left thumb on top, left thumb on top for me. <clears throat> Kaylee, which way do you do it normally? Your thumbs, thumbs. That's easier to describe than cr arm crossing. L left thumb on top. I personally am a left thumb on top person, but you know, I won't hold it against you if you're a right thumb on top person. Now, let's get our formula down. That was a nice little mental break, wasn't it, JJ? Um, 
Uh, what are we calculating in this problem? If I write PI on the board, what's it mean? <laughs> profitability index, okay? Profitability index <laughs> equals present value of cash flows divided by original investment, okay? <laughs> present value of cash flows divided by original investment. And so we've got three projects to do this for, project one, two, and three. Okay. Sarah, can you do the first one? And notice, it's really kind of helpful here because I, hopefully you remember from the first problem, the present value of cash flows, it's actually labeled for us. They do this work for us. Isn't that cool of them? Wasn't that really nice? They give you the present value of cash flows. Do you see which, which number that is for, for project one, Sarah? Yeah. Which, what number is it? <coughs> Perfect. And then the investment required is immediately above it. And so we take the present value of cash flows divided by the original investment required. 1.18. Very good. Gesundheit. Oh, number two. Tyler? No, 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 no. Because look at the label, not to, not to, and, but it's, but I'm, in some sense, I'm glad you did this now and not on the test. Because look at the label, look at the label off to the left, what is it? So look at the 66,140 and look straight left. What, it, the, the label is net present value. And so what's the difference between present value and net present value? Net present value is the Net, because we, we talked about this before, net present value is present value minus original investment. And so what we want is just the present value number, which is the number immediately above your 66,000. So what number is immediately above your 66,140? Perfect. Okay. <laughs> so that's the present value of cash flows. And what investment was required? $270,000, and there's your math. Uh, 1.24, okay. Evan, number th uh, project three, please. Very good. I mean, it's not even breaking even, or not even, I mean, it's not even paying back, payback period. It does not have a positive payback period. It's not getting their money back on that one. So that's not looking like a particularly good project. So now what we're going to do, so we have now done required number one, can't compute the profitability index for each investment project. Now what we're going to do is we've got project one, two, three. These are all the projects. Project one, two, three, and we have got net present value, profitability index, and internal rate of return. And what we're going to do is rank order them. We're going to rank order them, okay? So uh, why don't we do profitability index first because that, that we've already got it on the board. It's right here on the board. Whitney, you see this? Yeah. Yeah, right here. Which one's the best? Uh, number one, two. Two is the best. The profitability index, bigger is better. So number one is right there, project two. You get, the, get, the, get what's going on, JJ? What's the second best one? Uh, the project one. And then, by process of elimination, project three is the worst. 
Chris, let's talk net, present value, NPV. Which one has the best NPV? One. Okay. Kylie, which one's the second best? And then by process of elimination, that was number three. Kristen, how about internal rate of return? Which one's the best? I'm sorry? Number two? Which one's second best, Brett? Okay. Oh, what did I just do? Ugh, heaven forbid. There, does that look better? Is that what you were expecting me to write on the board? That's not what I wrote on the board, but maybe I went fast enough to erase it that the video camera didn't pick it up. And then this begins, this table begins to get at something that Tyson, an issue Tyson raised earlier in class, which was, well, wait a second, what if it's better on this other measure? You know, so here is a table that says, well, which, is there a clear number one? There's a clear number three, absolutely clear number three. It, it, to me, it looks like a pretty clear fail because they're not even getting your, not even getting their money back, okay? Pretty clear fail, but, but there isn't a particularly clear number one. These are both looking like pretty good projects. So what have we learned today? What calculations have we learned how to do today? Can you name one, uh, Brett? Yeah, profitability, profitability index. <laughs> Another one, Nicole? Although he's going backwards. We should start from the front. What was the first one we learned how to do today? The first one. And that's a little easier to kind of keep straight. Uh, present, value. present value. And then on the same page, what else did we learn how to calculate? Net present value, net present value, because we used an annuity to calculate net present value. Then what did we learn how to calculate on the next page? Uh, Rebecca? So we learned pres present value, net present value is what I was really hoping she would say. Internal rate of return, Alex? Payback period. Tyson, what was the next one we learned? Probably the accounting, rate of return. accounting rate of return. What's another name for the accounting rate of return, Robina? Simple rate. Simple rate of return. The accounting rate of return is different than the others in what way, Tony? We, I, you should not have shut your book. <laughs> Accounting rate of return is different than the others in what way? Oh, use, uh, net use net income rather than cash flows. And what was the last thing we learned how to do then, Davis? Profitability. Profitability index. You all have yourselves a great fall break. Okay.